Good morning everybody, my name is Shelby. It is so beautiful outside right now. It's also one of my most favorite days because I get to do some harvesting, some preservation, and some baking all in one day. Lots to get to, let's get started. What I'm doing right now is harvesting some kale. The hurricane actually snapped a lot of my kale leaves, but they're still good and still edible. What I do since we're in zone 9A, 9B, like basically zone 9, I always keep my kale bushes just going and going and going. I don't do kind of like a one and done type harvest with them. I don't do like a big preservation with kale because I like to be able to come out and harvest them when they're fresh. The nutrients are like at their height and nice and healthy. And this big bunch like this is probably about like $5 right now at my local grocery store at like a Publix, for example. So it's crazy to think like just how much all of this kale that I have growing would have cost. Let's see how many beans that we can harvest. Even if I don't have enough for the casserole that I'm wanting to um, bake off tonight, that's okay because I actually have some frozen beans from, from uh, the summertime. So I've got plenty of beans in my freezer and uh, combined with this. It actually feels like heaven right now. It is so, so nice outside. The high is 72, so I knew I was gonna be outside as much of the day as possible today. And I was really looking forward to filming and showing you guys what I got going on in the garden. It's been a little bit since I've been consistent. As some of you guys know, it's because I'm pregnant and just not really feeling my best. I've been having really bad migraines which has been continuing to go on. I'm at almost 24 weeks now, so a little bit surprising, but the past like week or so, I haven't been having headaches, which is like the first time in the whole pregnancy that I haven't had these like six hour, eight hour uh, headaches. Now I'm feeling way more like myself, way uh, more capable to get out here and do all the things that I love. And what I'm doing right now is harvesting the yellow beans they taste almost exactly like green beans although i think they're a lot sweeter so i do favor growing these ones they're stringless and this is a bushing variety i'm also growing uh, purple burgundy beans these are two of my favorites because they're beautiful they're a little bit different than your standard green bean but they cook up just the same why not add a little bit more color and fun to your dish by growing something that's just the same just as easy but a little bit more interesting Yellow beans definitely set fruit way quicker than the purple ones. So just so you guys know, these ones, uh, they, they come to maturity really quickly. And lots of green beans, which is great. I feel like it is almost a shame to harvest these beautiful, beautiful French radishes. Oh my goodness. Because I just love seeing them in the garden. They're kind of bright pink red color it just it looks so nice in the garden but the whole point of gardening and growing vegetables is to harvest the vegetables to eat them that's what i'm doing now and i'll just plant some more i actually have some like white icicle radishes already growing i didn't do succession sowing so i'm just going to harvest all of this and uh, roast some of them i'm going to pickle some of them and find different ways to uh, preserve them that way we can continue to enjoy them uh, for a few weeks wow there are so many in here this is so cool and they're all really healthy this is like one of my best radish harvests ever. The reason why I wanted to grow this variety is because when I actually used to work as a, a pastry chef, uh, it was at a steakhouse. So there were, um, you know, chefs making like savory foods and things like that too. And my head chef one time made uh, French radishes, just roasted in lots of butter and salt. I had never liked radishes or anything like that before, but then when he served it to me, I was like, wow, that is so, so good. That's why I wanted to uh, pick this variety to kind of replicate that uh, fond memory. I 
have a lot to kind of pre uh, wash off. I don't want to bring these inside and wash them off in the indoor sink. So what I do is I have one hose just kind of ready to blast off all the uh, sand. Whenever I'm harvesting like root vegetables and things, I just like to give them a pre rinse out here. So I'm not, again, introducing a whole bunch of dirt into our indoor sink. But wow, I'd say this is a successful harvest. I feel like I'm in one of those like rabbit um, uh, cartoon books when they have all these like beautiful illustrations of radishes and carrots and things. This is what I love about gardening is seeing these like just beautiful vegetables grown organically right at your house. I'm all done harvesting everything I need to harvest for today. So let's go inside and get to preserving, baking and cooking. This is my soft sourdough bread recipe. I didn't include like a full tutorial on it because I'm still kind of working on the recipe. I really enjoyed it. It turned out really well. Um, in this video, I'm actually just shaping it and putting it in the loaf pan so that it can rise for a few more hours. What I'm doing over here with the radishes is I'm going to uh, take all the tops off. Yes, I know that you can save the radish greens, eat them, all that. Personally, I don't like the, the greens. I don't really like the texture of them. These would be perfect to feed to your chickens, put in your compost bin. You can give them to your uh, worm bin if you have a worm bin. So definitely don't just throw them out if you don't plan on eating them. I still can't believe how abundant this harvest was. I wish all of my harvests were this abundant, but you know, you never know what you're gonna get when you're growing things. So I'm just removing the tops, rinsing them off, and then I also like to um, dip all of my vegetables in a vinegar solution, just a little bit of vinegar with some water to further kind of clean them, make sure they're uh, free of all the bacteria and everything, and then allow them to dry. All my radishes are cleaned and ready to cook with. I can roast them now. Just dropped a radish. I can roast them now or uh, pickle them, which I'm gonna do both. For the air frying recipe, I'm just doing about two cups of radishes. That's pretty standard if you were to buy radishes at the grocery store. So that's kind of what I'm going off of. And it's just gonna be like a little appetizer for us right now. I'm cutting the radishes in about a half inch uh, cube size. That way there's more surface area to get roasted and crispy in the air fryer. I don't have avocado oil, which uh, doesn't burn as easily in the air fryer. I don't wanna use olive oil because that actually does have like a lower smoke point. And in the air fryer, it does have a tendency to smoke. What I'm gonna do for this recipe is just do a little bit of vegetable oil. I'm doing about two tablespoons, or about like, yeah, about two tablespoons of vegetable oil for this recipe. And again, I would have preferred to do avocado oil, but I just didn't have any. For reference, this is about two cups of radishes, about one teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of onion powder, and a teaspoon of garlic powder, as well as about a teaspoon of salt. I tossed everything together. You could use less vegetable oil if you wanted to. I have a Ninja air fryer. I really like this air fryer because you can uh, prop it up and that way you can save some counter space. I'm gonna put it in there for 20 minutes on 400 and we'll see how that turns out. Let's see what they look like. They're looking super good. This is really hot, so. Um, but it smells nice. Very blistered and delicious looking. Just so you can kind of see that texture. Very, very good. It's gonna be super hot. Mm. So when you roast the radishes, I really feel like it takes away a lot of that bitterness. I'm not tasting any of those bitter notes at all. I like how this recipe really took like no effort. And then you have a great side dish, really high in vitamin C, uh, lots of different nutrients straight from the garden. And if you've never grown radishes before, they only take about 30 days to go from seed to harvest. So uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend growing them and roasting them this way. What I'm gonna get started on next is the green bean casserole. I've already measured out the green beans. I actually harvested about 
like two cups or so worth of green beans fresh today I'm going to just like pop the tops off and that way you know we don't have this little part uh, so I'm gonna do that with all of these and I have about a pound of frozen green beans that I grew and I froze uh, over the summertime so it's about 21 ounces of green beans most green bean casserole recipes call for uh, two cans of green beans so about 14 ounces so it's a little bit under but it'll be just fine I'm just tossing all my beans together before getting started on the onions I'm gonna give a crack at frying my own onions for the topping that everybody loves on top of the green bean casserole so I'm not gonna do like a buttermilk batter and all this crazy stuff. I'm just gonna toss these in some cornstarch and fry them, very simple. But I wanna see if it's better and how much, if it's worth the extra effort. And also once I start growing my own shallots and onions, I'm gonna want to fry up my own instead of doing, you know, buying that little store-bought can of the fried onions. Although, I think those are really good too. So, that's what we're gonna give a shot at today. I'm just cleaning off all of the skins from the shallots and setting them aside to cut up into circles. Chopping them up into thin little circles. If you want to do it, um, you know, a different way, you can chop them up a different way, make them straight up and down. But I like when they're little circles. And you don't have to use shallots for this. You can use regular onions. I like sweet Vidalia onions. That, that's my um, favorite kind of onion. But use whatever you have on hand. I just thought shallots would have a nice depth of flavor. And I had some in the refrigerator that needed to be used. For the fry recipe, I have about two cups of the shallots chopped up. I'm just scrambling up one egg in one bowl and then in the other bowl it's two-thirds of a cup of cornstarch and then a half a teaspoon of baking soda and then about a teaspoon of salt first toss your onions in the eggs and then toss them in the cornstarch mixture now you're ready to fry i'm frying in vegetable oil at about 350 degrees for four minutes or until the onions are really nice and golden brown once done frying don't forget to immediately salt them i'm just going to say that the uh, fried onions the crispy fried onions they smell really good it smells like a bunch of fresh onion rings in here and it actually smells like the can of crispy fried onions when you first open them up so I just want to give them a try because I've never made them like this so really interested to see how it is mmm you want to try it? <laughs> really good and I have the rest of these to fry up Really good. I think it's going to make the casserole a lot more like flavorful, interesting, and they're not like super dried out, like basically um, dehydrated like the other ones are. There's still that like kind of moist texture of like a little onion ring, so really good. My sourdough loaf is nice and proofed, just a little bit over the lip of the pan, so now it's time to bake it off. Just pulled the sourdough bread loaf out of the oven. I didn't get it on film because I had a whole like uh, camera equipment issue, but this is looking super good, like sandwich bread. I'm gonna allow it to cool down all the way before cutting into it to prevent affecting the internal texture. I'm gonna cut up my bacon before uh, sauteing it in the casserole pan into little chunks and saute it right in the casserole pan. So that's why I like using a Dutch oven because you can start it on the stove top and then finish it in the actual oven. What savory side is not enhanced with some delicious bacon? So that's why I thought this would go really well in the green bean casserole. Make sure that you are cooking the bacon down just before crispy because it's gonna continue to cook in the casserole. So the bacon's about done, and my favorite way to remove grease straight from a pan, and we want to keep it just like a little bit in there for flavor, of course, but we don't need all that bacon fat in there. Um, my favorite way to remove it is just to push all the meat or whatever you're trying to drain against the side, and 
get like a paper towel. I, I'm using two paper towels. I just put it straight in the um, side that all the grease has drained to and just soak it all up. Then I just throw the paper towel away and super easy, no mess. This is an eight ounce portion of bacon and I'm using about a half a cup of onions. These are the sweet Vidalia onions, of course, and I'm just sauteing them together. Once your onions are cooked down a little bit, toss in your green beans. I know most people boil these ahead of time, but I just toss them in there and I'm cooking them for a little bit longer and it was perfectly fine. So make sure everything's all nice and tossed together. Then you're going to add your one can of cream of mushroom soup. Next, you'll add a half a cup of milk and about a one cup of shredded cheddar cheese, a teaspoon of pepper, some onion powder, and some garlic powder. The full recipe will be in the description. Toss everything together. At this point in the cooking process, I've turned the heat off, so I'm just basically mixing everything together, then topping with a little bit more cheese, and lastly, the fresh fried shallots on top. I cooked this for 45 minutes in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit with a lid on and about five minutes with the lid off. This recipe turned out great. My husband mentioned so many times how tasty it was. I highly suggest it. I just wanted to give y'all a good old crumb shot of my soft sourdough bread. This turned out amazingly. I am going to make a video on this with step-by-step -step instructions because it is definitely worth the try. I'm gonna start out by just cutting my radishes. And gosh, I have a lot, a lot of radishes. I brought out six mason jars, but I don't know. I'll probably actually need more mason jars than that. I've never pickled radishes before, so, you know, this is new to me. And that's kind of the whole thing about like homesteading and becoming more sustainable is just trying new things. You don't have to be an expert at everything right away. So uh, I'll be cutting these super, super thin, or as thin as I can. Uh, I don't have a mandolin and they actually kind of scare me. So uh, if I had like a food processor attachment, that would be wonderful, but just gonna cut them. I'm cutting about 12 bunches worth of radishes as thin as possible. Really full bowl of radishes. I still have a lot left over. I still have about this much left over. I'm not gonna pickle all of them because I'm just gonna leave those ones for roasting. I'm gonna put them in the refrigerator and then we'll just like eat them for the week because I think this is gonna probably fill more than like the six mason jars that I have uh, laid out. So I'll probably have to grab a few more. Definitely gonna be giving these away to family members and people who are interested in having some pickled radishes in the refrigerator because there's no way we can eat all of these. So let's get to pickling. Now I'm gonna try to stuff the jars as much as possible with these fresh radishes. I'm gonna add a little bit more sugar to the recipe than what it calls for because I like things to be super sweet. And I think it'll help with just like kind of the, I like pickled things to be like on the sweeter side. What I'm planning on using these radishes for are like um, taco toppings uh, and like salads and things like that. You can use them for a lot of different things, but I really enjoy like pickled onions and pickled radishes when you're making like an artisan, um, like taco, pulled pork, all that. Very, very good. Again, just because I'm tripling this recipe, if you were to go to the grocery store and do this recipe times one, it would be about like four bunches. So just so you have a reference on that. I'm stuffing the mason jars as much as possible with the radishes. Then I'm finishing them off with one individual sprig of dill fresh from my garden and some peppercorns. All right, I'm going to triple this recipe because I have no gauge on how much uh, these six mason jars are gonna need. I packed them pretty good full of radishes and I gave them um, one sprig of dill and just like a little pinch of um, whole peppercorns per jar so far. And I know that I'm making too much uh, of this, but 
I'd rather have too much than too little because the, the ingredients aren't that expensive for the actual like uh, pickling sauce. I bought this, just like a big thing of white distilled vinegar and we need three cups because I'm timesing the recipe by three. And what we're gonna do is just put all of the pickling ingredients in one pan and get it hot and then pour it over the uh, radishes while it's hot. So it'll create like a quick pickling effect. All right, and this is three cups of water. Yes, my pan is kind of burnt. It's very clean, but it's a little bit burnt from making sourdough in it so much. So, you know, if it doesn't look perfectly clean, it is, it's just a little stained. I started out with three quarters of a cup of sugar, but then I went back and added another quarter cup. So it's one cup of sugar, two tablespoons of salt, and I mixed all of that together with the three cups of water, three cups of vinegar. Once everything was hot, I tried my best to pour it into the pitcher without spilling, but you know, you make mistakes. Next, pour your pickling solution right over the radishes in the mason jars, and then finish off by screwing on the lid. Allow that to kind of cook in its own juices for about an hour before eating it. Best the next day. I am sitting here next to my freshly pickled radish cans. This looks so beautiful. It was very, very easy to do. I'm like addicted. I can't wait till I get to pickle something else from the garden. This is a really easy first time experience doing this. Really glad that I tripled the recipe because it was the perfect amount for these six mason jars with the amount of radishes that I put in there and I really, really packed them full. I can't wait to try these. I'm gonna give them like about, you know, an hour or so before I try them. Overnight is best, you know, to try them the next day. They're supposed to be good in the refrigerator for up to three weeks because I, I didn't can them technically. I didn't like pressure can them or anything like that. I'm just uh, doing like a quick pickling. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're doing that. They should only last about three weeks, but hey, that's a good amount of time to be able to enjoy these radishes. This was a really fun experience, harvesting all of these vegetables, cooking all of these things with you guys, baking stuff, pickling stuff. I really enjoyed it today. So thank you guys so much for watching. And again, my name is Shelby, and until next time, bye.